Holy smokers, guys, cut those cords because Discord has been hacked. Welcome to the Cybersecurity Education Channel. My name is Levi. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day today. So today we're going to be talking about Discord getting hacked. We're going to be talking about what's happening. We're going to be talking about how it happens. We're going to be talking about what can happen to you. And most importantly, drum roll, how to protect yourself. How can you remove it if you have it and how to see if you have it in the first place. And always remember, if you like this content, smash that like button, hit those subscribe buttons, hit that notification bell to help more people like you protect themselves from these crappy cybersecurity incidents. So before we get started, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about what Discord is. Most of you guys that are watching this video probably already know, but the people that don't know, I wanna make sure they know so they can understand this content. Um, basically, Discord is a is a chat application or like a voice calling application. Its original use was for gaming. Back when I used to game all the time, I used it myself with a bunch of my friends on my computer. Um, and it allowed me to talk to my friends and message my friends while we were playing games. Um, it's evolved into more than just a gaming application now. It can really be used for any type of purpose now that you want to have a chat channel that's going or if you want to be able to talk to a big group of people focused on a similar topic. There's different channels that you can create and name those. Um, an example uh, is a channel that I was involved in, um, the Financial Education Private Stock Market Membership Group. Um, with Jeremy on the financial education channel on YouTube. He had his own paid group that people could uh, talk about their stocks that they were buying and selling and learn what he was buying and selling. And it was a good learning opportunity to improve your stock market knowledge skills. And that's basically what Discord is. It's just an app. It's just an application that allows people to chat with each other, create channels and um, do voice conferencing with each other with a bunch of different people at once. So all my information that I'm talking about in this video, it's coming from digitaltrends.com or it's coming from bleepingcomputer.com. I'll post links down in the description below so that you guys can check out those articles. All right, so what happened? Um, there's some malware out there that infected the Discord client on Windows computers only. Um, it's called Spidey Bot Malware. Ooh, if you're scared of spiders, you might want to avoid this. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so it modifies the Discord client on the computer to do some terrible things to your computer and steal information from you. We'll be talking about that a little bit later. Um, it's also known <laughs> as Blueface. Um, so if you're, my logic of this, if you're scared of spiders, you get a blue face. Or if you got bitten by spiders, you got a blue face. So it has to probably be called Spidey Bot, right? And the blue face is just a side effect. So maybe that's where the blue face came from. All right, so how do you get this terrible, terrible malware? But most of the articles I've been reading, they're talking about Discord chats, um, people sending messages in Discord chat groups, um, specifically about cheating, ways to cheat in video games. Um, they'll put a link in the group. Um, somebody clicks on the link, downloads an application to be able to cheat in a video game, and then boom, they get smacked with that malware. The Discord app gets infected, it restarts, and all these terrible things that we'll be talking about soon can happen. Um, so that goes to show cheating does not pay, so don't cheat. You will get hit back by cheating, so don't do it. Um, and then two more things that I've come up with myself that I think could be valid in ways that I could spread. Phishing, obviously, you know, every month I have my top three phishing threats that I talk about and give you guys information on how to protect yourself um, in those threats and, and learn from those threats. I'll put a card up above here that you guys can check out the last month of September if you want to learn more. And then you can go and look up previous videos if you want. Um, but basically, phishing is one of the top ways that people get infected with malware. So I think it's highly likely that this could be getting pushed out through malware as well. Um, and then also torrenting and users sharing illegal down downloads with each other for games and things like that, I think could also be a valid method for getting this malware on your system. So now we get to talk about the good stuff. <laughs> what can happen to you guys? 
if you get this Discord malware, as you can see here, information can be stolen from you, such as your Discord user token, your time zone, um, your screen resolution, your IP address, which you get, could give up your location of where you're at, um, your IP address via WebRTC, user information such as your username, email address, phone number, um, whether you have paid st stored payment information, um, zoom factor, I don't know what that is. If you guys know what that is, post it down in the description. I'd be really interested to see what that is. I've never heard of it. Um, browser user agent, so whatever you're using to browse the web, your Discord version, and then the most important thing that's really scary here is the 50 first characters of what's in your Windows clipboard. If you do a uh, copy on any type of text and you have this malware installed on your system, that information can be taken and sent to the, the terrible people, the hackers, um, and they can use that against you. And this is a big issue because um, if you're one of those people that uses the same password for every website and you're having to copy and paste it um, and you're using that same email address on Discord, well then somebody can go and match that email address and your password and try to use that on other sites and be able to get into your account. Um, the same thing, you know, even if you're following my suggestion where you're using a password manager and a password manager, you copy and paste those passwords into the sites and somebody could take that password and use it on one of your sites and get in. So that's kind of scary. Um, some other thing, other things that, that can cause a problem for you for is if you're copying your social security number, your credit card number, things like that. Um, which could allow that attacker to get that information and open accounts up in your name and things like that. The attacker also has the ability to be able to execute additional commands on your computer, which uh, could potentially allow them to be able to install more malware on your computer that could basically let them do whatever the F they wanted on your computer. So that's a big threat with this too. Um, and basically at that point then there's there's just a realm and realm of terrible things that they can do to you. So now we're finally to the part that you guys have all been waiting for. How to protect yourself in this situation. How to see if you actually have this malware and how you get rid of it if you have the malware. So how do you see if you actually have the malware? Well, if you take a look at the screenshot here, if you go to app data, uh, discord, um, whatever version of, of Discord that you have, modules, Discord underscore modules, index.js, open that with notepad, and you see this text line below. If you see anything else in that file, um, you more than likely have this malware on your system. And then the same thing goes for the file down below it as well, app data, Discord um, version, modules, Discord desktop core, index.js. You open that up with notepad, and you gotta make sure that the information in that notepad file matches this, or you've likely infected with the malware. That's how you can tell if you're, in, if you're infected by this. Um, if you don't quite understand how to do that, um, to get rid of the malware, to make sure that you don't have the malware, you can just go in the program files folder, uninstall Discord, go back to their website, download the new version of Discord, reinstall it, and you won't have the malware unless you reinfect yourself again by going and, and trying to do the cheat again or, or running the installer that you ran before that put that malware in your Discord client. So just uninstall and reinstall if you don't want to take the message to see if you actually have it. That's the easiest way. So what else can you guys do to protect yourselves in this situation? Well, the number one thing that you can do is don't cheat. If you don't cheat and the main method for spreading this is because of cheaters, you won't get this, right? So don't cheat. Don't be a cheater. <laughs> but I know that you cheaters aren't gonna listen to me, so what else can you do? Um, you can take phishing email and web browsing precautions because if you're not getting it through um, the Discord links that I'll be sending out, you're probably going to get it through a phishing email or browsing the web, downloading something. Um, and you know, one of the best ways you can do that is to watch the watch the various videos on my channel to learn how to protect yourselves, especially those phishing videos that I come with out with on a monthly basis. You know, doing things such as when you're getting a phishing email, taking the time to think about the content in that email, whether it's legit or not. Looking at the sender, is it somebody that you know? Um, 
Are you expecting attachment from that sender hovering over those links to make sure they're going to where they're actually going? Um, if you get redirected to a page that looks suspicious and the page looks weird, it probably is. Don't insert information into that page. Don't download um, files from websites that look suspicious. Always look at the address and make sure that it's spelled right and it makes sense. Um, things like that can help protect yourselves from getting malware like this, not only in this situation, but for any type of malware on your system. So yeah, the main thing is keep watching my channel to learn different various methods. Go back and watch some of my videos. I talk about how to protect yourself from stuff like this all the time. And then obviously staying away from torrenting and illegal downloads. Um, torrenting allows people to connect out to multiple other people and people can change those files and inject vi viruses and malware into those so if you're trying to download an illegal game or music or things like that people can inject uh, malware in there and infect your system or they can affect your discord client in this case and cause a lot of bad things to happen so don't don't be doing illegal stuff um, sharing files with other people via torrenting throughout the internet um, because you really open yourself up to a huge risk. While there might not be enough cost front to getting illegal content, you could have a greater cost by getting malware on your system that steals information about you that puts you in a fraud case or gets you ransomware or something like that. Just always pay for your games, your videos, your music, things like that so that you don't have to worry about this stuff. And then finally, the last thing that could potentially help you in this situation is having antivirus that's updated on your system. It may potentially alert you that, hey, something funky is going here. It's not a catch-all thing. It's not, antivirus doesn't always catch everything, but, it can be one method to help detect situations like this and help you prevent these situations from happening. Other things to take note of, um, if you're a Mac user, you might be like, Well, Levi, I can't get a virus on my system because I have a Mac and Macs don't get viruses. This is just a great example because I didn't get a virus on my Mac Discord. Well, I hate to break it to you, but if you do a Google search, you'll find that Macs can get viruses, so you should take all of these steps um, to prevent um, you from getting malware and viruses because you can get hit. Um, and then finally, the last thing is, if Discord wanted to help prevent this, they could go and add to their software some file checking protection so if the Discord files get changed, um, it, will, it can notify the user that hey, your Discord files have been changed, are you sure you want to open this? Or it could just force Discord to close right away. Hopefully Discord will put something in and that will help you protect you guys as well. All right, so I hope you guys learned a lot from this content. As always, guys, I thank you so much for watching this channel. Um, do me a big, huge favor and go ahead and smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell to promote my content up in the YouTube algorithm so that more people like you can learn from this information and prevent or help themselves from with this terrible cybersecurity stuff that's going around. Um, and, and then do all you can to help share this content for me and for you guys so I can keep putting out good content for you guys to learn from. As always, thank you very much and have a great day.